all those lost over the past several decades to Sudan's military regimes. It's an honor to be here in solidarity with you all today and to talk about Sudan and the effects of these deadly planes on its civilian populations. While it would take hours to adequately explain the crisis in Sudan, I'd like to begin by giving you all a bit of context. On the morning of April 15, 2023, millions across Khartoum, Sudan's capital, woke up to the sounds of heavy gunfire and planes just like the ones on display here today. War had broken out in the capital of Sudan between the rapid support forces, a paramilitary militia, and Sudan's national army. The only way civilians were notified was through the sounds of airstrikes heard all over the city. For the over 500 days that have followed, Sudan has been at war. Millions are living with imminent danger, facing famine and malnutrition, cholera outbreaks, or sexual assault at the hands of the rapid support forces. Journalists, activists, community volunteers face routine detention, torture, and in many cases, extrajudicial executions at the hands of both the armed forces and the RSF. There are an unknown number of the dead, but conservative estimates tell us at least 150,000 people have died since the outbreak of war. Bombings and airstrikes have become a daily reality for the people from Khartoum to Al-Fashir. Sudanese people are painfully aware of the horrors that these, war, that these fighter jets leave in their wake. We've become intimately familiar with the death and destruction they bring. From Darfur to Khartoum to the Nuba Mountains, we've seen thousands of innocent men, women, and children fall victim to aerial bombings in the name of state security. Hey. Hey. Many of the planes on display here today are military planes, fighter jets, and while the ones used in Sudan may not be made by Lockheed Martin, their effects are exactly the same. These kinds of planes that our city chooses to celebrate today have caused the deaths, displacement, and disability of thousands of people in Sudan, millions of people in Sudan. Homes, homes have been destroyed, entire population centers have been decimated in a matter of hours. Sudan today is the worst humanitarian crisis on earth. 2.5 million people are expected to die of hunger or illness by the end of September. Yay! Access to aid is hindered, first by warring parties politicizing aid, and now by the rainy season, which has brought unprecedented flooding that has worsened the displacement crisis and has killed over 150,000 people over the course of the past week alone. Yay! The humanitarian response has been non-existent. No help has arrived, no ceasefire has held, and thousands are at risk of certain death without an immediate, meaningful humanitarian intervention. We call on the government of Canada to step up and amplify calls for open and safe corridors for humanitarian relief. The people of Sudan need food and medical supplies that remain trapped at border crossings for months on end as people die waiting for these convoys to pass. We call on the Canadian government to implement a free and expedited refugee visa program for Sudanese citizens trapped in active war zones. We demand that the government of Canada uses its diplomatic capacity to pressure the United Arab Emirates to turn off the taps to the RSF to stop supplying them with North American weapons. And we demand that the government of Canada sanctions and seizes all assets and operations owned by Dickens and Madsen, a Montreal lobby firm directed by a former Mossad officer in its role in whitewashing war crimes perpetrated by the RSF through a sustained PR propaganda and lobbying campaign in its effort to legitimize, legitimize a genocide air. Finally, we demand that the city of Toronto ends the militarization of our skies. We stand in solidarity with you all today, and we say that there is no place for these planes, these weapons in our city, and there is no place for them in our world. Every time they fly over our homes, they serve as a reminder of the government of Canada's endorsement of their use in the murder of innocent civilians all over the world. Free the people, free the land. Free the, people. the people power, the people must stand up twice. Must double their commitment, their confidence. To see that we rise to the militarism, 
and will rise to the dictators. My name is Samuel Okisitu. When I fled from Uganda to come to Canada, I named myself Freeman. I thought I have learned, okay, I've come to the land of milk and honey, the land where my dreams will be fulfilled, the sanctuary country I have landed in the sanctuary city. Things, uh, thinking things will be better than ever before when I get protection. But here I come to the sad reality. When we saw so many Africans on the streets, we don't know that so many fled the wars that uh, the air show is promoting. Shame. Again, my name is Samuel Kisitu. I am a member of the Migrant Workers Alliance for Change. I stand here before you today as someone who fled Uganda, seeking asylum in Canada after being targeted for supporting the People Power Movement. A movement that led to the growth of a political party called, called the National Unity Platform, uh, led by Robert Chiagulani Sentamu, also known as Bobby Wine, a musician who turned politician to fight for the local people, the ghetto people. We are here today not to just speak out, but to demand an end to the glorification of the war, of, the, of wars, and militarism, which the Toronto Air Show represents. We stand united to demand an end to the war and, and an end to the borders and an end to the two-tiered immigration system. We call for permanent residence status for every people who fled their homes seeking for protection, finding safe haven after fleeing wars and other devastations. We want this, the, the, the permanent residence status. We demand that the permanent residence status include all undocumented people. But, the truly, but to truly understand why we are here today, we must confront the tragic reality that was enabled by militarism continue to devastate lives around the world, especially Africa. After the horrors of colonialism and slavery, we now endure the, the, the ravages of neocolonialism and modern day slavery. Wars that are sustained by, very, by the very militarism that the air show glorifies. Across Africa, Dictators have clung onto power for far too long, often at the expense of democracy and freedom. And while some may urge that militaries have at times tipped the scales toward democracy, we must change that narrative. Article 1 of the Ugandan Constitution states all power belongs to the people who shall exercise their sovereignty in accordance to the constitution. But that is not true in Uganda. And that is why Uganda is listed number two. UN lists Uganda number two of the top countries where uh, 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 um, people have fled their homes. I mean, they are the number of migrants. The number of my immigrants freeing their homes for permanent stay where, wherever they, they, they go lists Uganda as number two. But I want to tell you that many of those go undocumented, like other members who are not documented from other countries. So we must stand together. I fled Uganda with this red 
this red belt, which I wear as not as a symbol of military, no. no I'm, I'm not a soldier, no. I've never been in army or police, no. But I wear this belt as a symbol, as a democratic and peaceful symbol of the people power movement. Many of you have seen such bereits have the gun. We, have, we just have the chant, people of power movement, and our fist of standing united wherever we go, whether locally, at home, or in the diaspora. We civilians, we are committed to removing the, the world is serving dictator. You're welcome, Guta Museveni. Museveni, who was... Who, Museveni, who was claimed to fight for liberation. When I put Museveni, you put the dictators back at your home. The dictators you have home. Where I have put Museveni, you put the name of that who claimed to fight for liberation just like that president who wanted to fight for liberation in your country has now become the, oppre the very oppressor he fought against the Ugandan bush war which began in my homeland Luelo district claimed the lives of between uh, 100,000 to 500,000 people. The war that brought Museven to power. My family too was drawn into these conflicts. My father, Elsani Achisitu, I will name, make these names because you don't know why. My father, Elsani Achisitu, who named me after his name to be Samuel Achisitu, joined Museven in the, war, in the fight. And my uncle, Uwama Livingstone, was killed by Obote soldiers for hiding Museveni. My father, Ronald Setimba, who survived the war, carried the burdens, the heavy burdens of caring for the widows and orphans the late left behind. I know many of you Canadians know about one dictator, Idi Amin, who expelled the, the Ugandan Indians in the 1972. I want to inform you that the rise and fall of one dictator will make the rise and fall of another. And we want to tell you, I want to tell you that it is worse in Uganda, 38, the, the 38 years that Museveni has uh, been in power, it is horrible for us who want to, who want him to free the land, who want to, to who want him to at least rest, like Biden says, I stop here. Growing up, I witnessed the lasting scars of this war, fueling my unwilling resistance against, against a government that has brought too much, too much poverty and misery to our people. The pain of losing my uncle symbolizes the sacrifice of so many who dared to resist oppression across the world. This red bullet represents the blood lost that is white red. The blood lost by so many victims of war in Uganda, in Africa and the rest of the world. But the trauma of the war does not end when we cross borders. Even here in Canada, we are confronted with the glorification of the war. As you may see, what's happening. The Toronto Air Show with its lowering CF-18s is a branded advertisement for militarism 
showing how, how powerful they are. These war planes have slaughtered thousands across Afghanistan, Libya, Iraq, and Syria. They have bombed critical infrastructure, leaving millions without safe drinking water or electricity, and contributing to massive humanitarianism uh, crisis and refugee crisis. Some of us, like myself, we are, were fortunate enough to escape and free refugee and, and free and, and, and flee the lands and seek refugee or uh, to, to free <coughs> some of us were fortunate enough to seek to escape and seek refugee in countries like Canada but the trauma of war does not end when we cross the borders many of us are separated from families forced to navigate an immigration system that devalues our humanity. Even here in Canada, the Toronto Air Show glorifies war, a war that has destroyed our lives and uprooted us from our homes. War is not something we should celebrate. It is something we must resist. We are here to remind you or to demand justice. An end to war, an end to borders, and an end to a two-tiered immigration system. We demand permanent resident status for everyone, including the undocumented. Let's stop sanitizing the horrors of war and start fighting for peace, justice, and dignity for all. Join us on September 15th at the City Hall at 1 p.m. to the rally to unite against racism and say yes to immigration justice. Let's come together to demand status for all and re regularization of everyone. Canada, stop the Toronto Air Show. Thank you for listening. We all heard the jets flying over us. And for us, we feel uncomfortable simply because it's loud and it's disrupting our day-to-day -day life. But for our people in Gaza, what follows the sound of these fighter jets is much more horrific. They face the brunt of it. So shame on the city of Toronto for hosting these events. While they know there are families from all over the world, from Gaza, Sudan, Uganda, Iraq, Syria, living in this city, having to relive the trauma that that sound brings them. Shame! Shame, shame on you! Shame, shame! Make our demands heard. Because it is shameful that Canada is complicit and people are coming to enjoy these events. What enjoyment is there? It's a family outing. The, the media asked me earlier, but the, the families are coming out. This is enjoyment for families. Okay, what about the families in Gaza and all over the world that have to face the brunt of these killer machines in the, in the sky? Shame! Okay, now we're gonna have our comrade Pamela from Labor for Palestine come and speak. Labor for Palestine, we get asked, why are unions talking about Palestine? Why are you here talking about that? Why aren't you talking about workplace issues? And we say, we are here today because Palestine is a workplace issue. It is a labor issue. We're here because labor rights are human rights. And human rights are universal. They belong to all of us. Irrespective of where you are born, irrespective of where you live. That makes us internationalists. That means we stand in solidarity with workers here locally, with healthcare workers, with transport workers, with transit workers, with educators. But we also stand in solidarity with workers in Palestine. We stand in solidarity with workers around the world. So when we learn that our government is complicit in war, 
When we learn that our government is complicit in genocide, that our government uses our tax dollars that they collect from our labor to purchase jets that are not used to keep us safe, but to bring death and destruction to workers and their families around the world, we fight back, we speak out. We mobilize to say that we will not be complicit. We fight back to ensure that our labor, our money, will not be used to murder children and their families. That our taxes will be directed toward ensuring our well-being and the well-being of humanity. We show up to say that we are people of peace, not war. And this is our weekend. The CNE concludes with our holiday. This is the Labor Day long weekend and it belongs to workers, not to warmongers. Toronto is a union town. Two days from now, 20,000 people will march in the largest annual labor event in North America to celebrate the contributions of workers. And we will not stand for our weekend to be used for the glorification of bloody wars around the world. As workers, we all have a role to play in stopping the war machine. We have to invite CNE workers to join us in this fight. We have to let them know what these jets are used for. We have to show them the devastation they cause and the lives they destroy. We have to support them in approaching their unions to say they don't want to participate in a show that hides the realities of what these jets do, which is drop bombs on people, their homes, their schools, their roads, they're hospitals. This is not entertainment. The CNE is a family-friendly event. It is supposed to bring Torontonians and our guests to the city together. Not re-traumatize the people in our city who have lived through bombing runs. Bombings that our country has carried out in our names, but really to advance Western imperialism. This is not what workers have signed up for. And workers are going to fight this until the air show is no more. Free Palestine, free workers around the world. Free, free Palestine. Free, free Palestine. The bombings of Lebanon, which has so far produced over 500 martyrs. Shame. The militarism we are seeing here, presented in front of us, is the same militarism responsible for the death of hundreds of thousands of people in the global south, from Africa to Latin America to the Middle East and all over the world. We must reject this militarism and blatant, blatant promoting of this worship, of this culture of death. Shame! There are families that have lived through war, the sound of the jets, they're reliving the trauma. Like I said, for us it's just a discomfort of sound, but our people in Gaza, in the Middle East, in Africa, they face the brunt of these war machines in the sky. Shame! Shame. Free realism around the globe. Shame! We refuse to let these elected officials undermine the public's demands by secretly engaging in these bloody deals that are leading to the death and destruction of our kin in Gaza, the West Bank, Lebanon, Syria, and Yemen, and all over the world. Shame! So this is why it's important we show up to these events. The, this, I can't even find words, this shameful display of fighter jets.
We will not allow these events to go on so long as Canada stays complicit. It is our role to push these contradictions and to put added pressure until the Canadian government provides material action towards a ceasefire, towards an arms embargo, to lifting the siege on Gaza. From Turtle Island! I just want to really shout out the fact that we are here, we may be smaller in numbers today, but this is a growing movement to shut this thing down. People in this city do not want to be experiencing the air show, and we know this. I'm Anna, I'm with Parkdale High Park for Palestine. I've been doing Palestine organizing and migrant justice organizing for the last 20 years. I have been in this city when I first moved to Parkdale, and I had no idea about the air show. And I experienced those jets overhead and could not believe that this is something that happens in this city. Look around you, there are people from all different parts of this city, all different experiences. There's people from environmental justice groups, there's people who are here for Palestine, whose whole hearts are with Palestine. My whole heart is also with Palestine. We, there are people who are here because we have experienced war and occupation in our places of origin. There are people who are here because they hate the air show because it is brutal on our ears, on all of our senses, our nervous systems. It's too much. We are here because we actually know we can create other traditions in this city. This is not a tradition that we should be honoring in this city. So I want to be here to say, let's build this movement as this year today. From today, we are building and we are getting city council to shut this down. There is no reason this should be happening anywhere and this should not be happening in, in Toronto that has one of the most multicultural populations in North America. This is not something that should be happening when we know there are a lot of people who come down to the air show because it's free. I understand that. You come down for something free that you've heard is cool. Let's create something else in this city that immigrant families, that working class families can come out to. Let's find another way to actually celebrate. Let's find another way to come together for something that doesn't cost money. We know that there are people here because they've just heard about it in the same way that people hear about Canada as this lovely, welcoming place that you, could, you can find refuge in. Does this feel like refuge to you? Does this feel like refuge with these jets flying overhead? So I want to say to everyone, it doesn't stop today. Actually join this movement because we actually have the power to shut the air show down. We actually have the power to influence that. Apparently, Olivia Chow says she does not like the air show. Put your money where your mouth is and stop the air show. <laughs> we know we had all kinds of plans for today. We wanted to move, we wanted to go lots of places. What I want to invite everyone to do is talk to each other, meet each other, hear all the different movements that we are a part of. And we have a tent set up over here. We have our neighborhood groups for Palestine set up over here, Park the High Park for Palestine, Davenport, all of these neighborhood groups read the materials, come see what's about. We did order some pizza, not tons, but there's going to be some pizza, there's some snacks. Meet your neighbors, meet your um, sister and fellow Torontonians. Please come together and know that we actually can end this, and this doesn't end today, okay? So look at the world here on our website, you can find ways to join us, you can organize with us, you can endorse the Stop the Air Co-Pinching. We are just getting started. Okay?